Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. In this one we are going to be making Minecraft style base uh, bed spawning. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, we're going to place beds and then once you click E on it, you're going to set the spawn location and you can also add multiple locations to your system like so. But I press K, I'm going to die. And uh, I'm going to spawn at my last bed. I can remove that bed by left clicking to kill it. And then I can... I'm killing myself again now. You can see the top there. Going to the next one in the array. And so on and so forth until I reach the end. And once I reach the end and kill the last bed, I just do not have a spawn point anymore. So I should end up back at my default spawn. There we go. Anyway, that's what we're going to do today. So let's just get right to it. I'm going to import a bed that I've made. Uh, it's going to have generates and everything, but we don't care about that. That's our bed. This one. So we're going to folder for that. Go bed. So we put everything inside of that. Make a new one. Call this one mesh. Then another one, which is. Moving that in like so. Then I'm going to make a new blueprint class. It's going to be an actor. I'll call this one BP bed. Instead of BP bed, we are going to add our static mesh. I'm going to add the bed to that. I'm going to go to the left or right view. And let's adjust this. Be on the red line. Let's also check the front. Everything should be fine. Yeah, everything is fine. That's the way we want it. So now we've got a bed. Um, let's set up the way to places in the world first. So this is going to be very simple, uh, similar to what we do previously in other tutorials. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function. I'm going to call this one place bed. Then I'm just going to get the camera and then line trace. You know, you know the drill. To add these two together. That's the end. That's the start. This is a float. Let's do 500. Might be too much. Out from the out here, we're going to break that open. We're also going to set this to be persistent for now. We're going to do a spawn actor from class. Actor being our bed. Transform splitting that and grabbing the location of our trace line and save go back to your event graph i'm gonna put this on keyboard b b for bed play now you can place that on bed awesome let us uh, work a little bit with the bed so the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a arrow to our bed we're gonna call this one the spawn point move that above so that it's like that i'm gonna do it like a hundred and 40 up. You could probably do it a little bit lower. I'm going to do 140. You get that. Uh, you can also get the rotation if you want to do it like that. We're just going to do the location. Though. So this is what we're going to do. Inside of our variables, we're going to add a couple. We're going to add a player reference, which is our first person in this, in this case. We're going to have a current health, which is a float. A maximum health, which is also a Compile and save. Set those defaults to 100 for our testing purposes. Start of our event graph, you can remove all of these. And let's add a event any damage. The damage causer is going to be our player. So we can cast that to our first person character. Then we can set our player reference to the outcome of that after this we want to get our current health we're going to set our current health we're going to set our current health to current health minus the damage that's incoming from our event that is our out uh, that is our set out from the the float here we want to do a less than or equal to zero so if if uh, after we have applied the damage is the current health less than or equal to zero. If it is not, 
then we're going to call a, another event soon. But if it is, then we're basically dead. So we're going to get our player reference. We need to make a function on, over on him. So this is going to be update spawn point. Update spawn point is very simple. We're just going to have an input of a vector, which is going to be location. Then we're going to have a couple of variables. Both of them are going to be vectors. We're going to have default spawn point. And we're going to have custom spawn point. Custom spawn point goes into there like so. We're also just going to do a print string out of this. And after the print string, return. And we're going to append this string by saying spawn location set. And then just I'm going to add the I'm going to add the custom as well. It's going to be like that. That is our update spawn point. Let's go back to our bed. So when it was less than or equal to, then we want to kill basically our spawn point that we have here. So we want to update spawn point, but we want to set that spawn point to be zero. Then we want to destroy the actor. So now we have destroyed our bed. We want to go into our content drawer and we're going to go into blueprints and then blueprint interface. Gonna be our interact interface. Function name is gonna be interact, not interacty, interact. It's gonna have one input of our first person character. Player ref. And an output of success. Pile that, head back into your bed, go to class settings up here. Go over to add on your implemented interfaces and search for your newly created interface. Now we can expand this on the left side, open that up. When we interact with it, we want to update spawn point again. So we have, a, we have our input here. We can now, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's just set it as well. Then we can get our player reference. We can update spawn point. What are we going to update it to? We're going to update it to the spawn point arrow that we made. This is where you would do location and uh, rotation and stuff as well. If you want that, we are just doing location. Then we can return with a success. Now, I haven't set up our... I said that we're going to make a custom event here. So let's do that. Add a attacked event. And over on attacked... We're gonna add, it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna add a re-triggerable uh, delay, which basically means that if you if you fire again on this, it's gonna start at zero again. So you can re-trigger this, as it says here. But if you do a normal delay, this is gonna fire off regardless if you feed it a new input. This one will stop if you feed it a new input and then start counting over again. After one second, if uh, we haven't, uh, if you have stopped attacking it after one second, we're going to set our current health back to 100. Because then we, maybe we didn't want to destroy the bed after all. If we go back to our first person character and over on our, where we've got our place bed, you can copy your line trace that we have set up here. And then we're going to make a new function. And this one is going to be called interact. It's going to have the same, except that we're going to do 300 on the multiplication. Then we're going to break our out hit and on our out hit actor, we're going to check if it does implement interface. The interface is our interact interface. If it does, out from your hit actor again, you can call your interact. And our player ref is obviously ourselves. I think it's actually firing off because we haven't set that up. We have just set up the function. So keyboard E for me be our interact now you can see in the top left that our spawn locations are being set to the to the place now we need to set up a way to uh, kill these uh, beds so we're going to make a new function it's going to be left mouse button attack and left mouse button attack is going to be very similar so drag out your uh, line trace and uh, stuff like that you make that back in here and have this on 300 as well. Then we want to do our, on our out hit. On our out hit, we're going to do at the hit actor, a 
apply damage. This is where it comes to play the damage closer again. As you remember over here, I said that the damage closer is going to be our first person character. Now we're going to apply the damage and the damage closer is going to be our first person character ourselves. I'm going to do 25 damage. So it's going to take five to kill it. Then over my, back of my event graph, now I can do a left mouse button. Left mouse button attack. Then place down a bed. One, two, three, four. It's gone. Spawn location gets set to zero. Now, here's the thing. We also want to make sure that... Because zero is going to be over here. This is zero. Ish. Right? We don't want it to be here. We want a custom spawn point. So I'm going to do... I'm going to move this character up here, maybe. Then I'm going to right-click this location, copy that. Into our first-person character, I'm going to do default spawn point and I'm going to paste that location and I want to make a new function I'm going to call this one respawn respawn will check if our custom spawn point is equal to zero do we have a custom spawn point or not if it is equal to zero then we're going to get our capsule we're going to set the world location so this is if it's zero, then we're going to set it to the default spawn point. And if it's not zero, then we're going to set it to the custom spawn point, which is our bed. So back on our event graph, I'm just K. And then I'm going to do a two new variables. This one is going to be current health points. It's going to be a float also going to be a float and this is our maximum health points i'll get that and set it to 100 and both get your current health points you're going to do current health points minus 25 on this i'm going to do it you do this however you want it to be this is just a test to see how what happens when you die basically less than or equal to zero If that is true, then we're going to call a custom event. going to call this one kill. I'm going to do a print out of that. You died. Delay of one second. I'm going to copy this. Respawning in three. And then we can call our respawn. Go. Go ahead and file and save. If I do, if I kill myself now, I should end up at the custom point up there. I uh, haven't actually managed to kill myself because we haven't called it. Awesome. Kill. There we go. You died. Respawning in three, two, one. Boom. Okay, we're up there. Let's go and uh, put our bed down over here. Interact with it. Now we got our new spawn location. I'm going over here. Killing myself. Now that is our new location. If I go over here, interact with that, that should be our new location, even though we still have that bed over there. There we go. Uh, now you have to remember. Just even if, if I remove this bed now, that does not mean that this bed is going to be there let me see if i can figure this out i'll be right back a little longer than a few minutes later okay i'm back uh i figured out what we can do we can get our custom spawn point and we're gonna make that into an array pile so you can see where the errors are over on our respawn we're gonna go out from our new array we're gonna do is empty move this one that goes into our condition if it is empty, up top stays the same. Or if it's not empty, just move this one. We're gonna get our custom spawn point. We're gonna do a get out of that. What are we gonna get? We're gonna get the length of our array minus one to get the last entry, the last valid entry of our array. And that is gonna be our new location. I'll find new errors. Over here, where we can remove this, 
uh, can remove, just remove everything, honestly, can do it like that. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to see if our custom spawn point array contains item. If it already contains our location. If it already does that, if that is true, we don't want to do anything. Or if it doesn't, then we want to add add item to array. So if it's false, we want to add item to array. What item? This item. The location that we are uh, sending in through our update. So that goes into the print string. I do believe there's one more thing that I haven't done, and I think that's on the bed. Uh, actually, maybe this is fine. Let's still play. If I now destroy the bed, okay, that didn't work, and that's because I knew I forgot something. On our bed, when we when we kill it, when we kill our bed, uh, when it's less than or equal to, if that is true, we remove this update of the spawn point. Get your player reference. We're gonna get the custom spawn point array. Out from the array, we're gonna remove index. That goes into the true and that goes into destroy. What index are we gonna remove? We're gonna go out from our do 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 do. We're gonna go out from our array. We're gonna do a find item out of that. Get our spawn point, get the world location. And that is gonna be our array index. And that should update our our spawn locations. So I place down this one here. I kill myself. I don't need to do all of this testing, but I'm doing it anyway. So setting my spawn point here, testing. And I'm gonna go and set a third one up here. And we're testing like that. But now remove this one, I should end up there. Then kill myself. Awesome. If I now remove this one, that should lead me to my last one. Awesome. If I now remove this one, it theoretically should bring me back to the spawn. Um, however, I do feel like it's going to be an error. Yeah, there we go. So it went up to zero, zero, zero. Problem with that is that the default spawn point, I uh, that uh, this shouldn't be an issue for you guys, but it, it's an issue for me. It's because I, uh, I when I was testing, I set this... Uh, spawn point uh, to an array and when I set it back again it turned into 000. That's how you would make a Minecraft style bed spawning system I believe. <laughs> if you want this uh, static mesh I can probably upload it somewhere just let me know in the comments and I'll upload the mesh for you guys the model. Um, if you enjoyed if you find this vi found this video helpful feel free to leave a like uh, and a subscribe you know that that always always makes me smile and if you have any questions let me know in the comments and i will try my best to answer them as soon as possible until next time